Hey muchachos and muchachas, good to be back with you. This is another in a series of how to use MathCAD. It's an introduction and in this one I'd like to help you learn how to find maxima and minima of functions. Now this is something you may do in a calculus class or an optimization class or maybe if you have a design project and you want to improve your design somehow. It could be a product or a process. So we're going to learn how to define functions in MathCAD how to find their maxima and minima using commands that are in MathCAD. We'll plot them when it's possible to plot them, when you have few enough variables. And we'll also learn how to apply constraints so you can limit the range of solutions that are allowable. So with that, let's go to my computer and let's fire up MathCAD. All right, here we are in MathCAD 15. I have us zoomed into 200%, so you should be able to get a clear view of what's on my screen. I also have the usual toolbars turned on up there. Now, if we're going to find the minimum of a function, we're going to have to define the function. So let me start. I'll make a function of one variable. Now, I have to use one of the equal signs in MathCAD, and I want the one called definition. I want the one that tells MathCAD something. That's that one right there. It's called definition. I can either click that button, or if I want, I can press the colon button, the full colon button on my keyboard, and that'll also bring that up. But that colon equal says, I want to tell MathCAD something. In this case, I want to tell it what my uh, function's going to be. Okay, now don't let the exponent of an exponent freak you out here. All that uh, square does is just make sure that that number, that x right there, is always positive, so that's always negative. And this gives you a, a Gaussian curve. So if I hit x and f of x, there it is. Now, by the way, if I want to insert a plot, I can go insert graph xy plot, or we can do what I just did and just hit the at key on your keyboard. All right, so let's put this there and let's make this bigger so we can get a good look at it. Well, that's nice. It's got a minimum. It's at zero or a maximum. It's at zero, and uh, but it's not very interesting. Let's fix that. I found out by just sort of experimentation here that if I multiply a parabola by that, I get a much more interesting curve. This is something a little more suited to what we need. Looks like the maximum ought to be about 3, 3.1 something maybe. Let's try this. Maximize f comma x. There's a maximize and a minimize command and you just type them in and they mostly work. This one isn't going to. Watch. Hit equals. Variables undefined. Well that error message is correct without being very useful. What they mean to say is that not that the variable is undefined, but I didn't define an initial guess for it. The algorithm that uh, powers the ma maximize and minimize functions is like a lot of other algorithms and it needs a starting point, an initial guess. An initial guess doesn't have to be very good, it just has to be one. So when I type in x0 for the initial guess, there it is. Well, there it is, but what happened to my plot? Well, it looks like my plot disappeared, but, you know, x changed, the x range changed, and something's going on with the f of x there. Well, there is one point on there, and if I go up here and turn on this symbol, you can see it. There it is. Well, why is there only one? Because I told it x is only one point. x is zero. So there's zero. There's f of zero, which is four. There it is. It's doing exactly what you wanted. Well, exactly what you told it to do. Okay, let's do this. Let's put this down here and go back to where MathCAD was making a range of x's to plot. And the line looks big and chunky now because I have so many points and it's trying to draw all those boxes. So let's get rid of those. And there we go. Okay, so there's the uh, maximum. I'm going to refresh that. By the way, on MathCAD 15, there's there's a flaw in the screen driver, and you can go in and you can hit refresh. Go to view and hit refresh, or just hit control R, which is what I just did. Once in a while, you get a little a little uh, mess there that you got to clean up. So there's maximize, and let's find minimize. There, which is minus two, which is like that. Let's go to max back to maximize for a second it found that, which is the global maximum. That's the highest value of that function anywhere. It didn't find this. That's a local minimum. And the 
algorithm that uh, runs maximize and minimize in MathCAD is pretty good. A lot of the time it really will find a local or I'm sorry a global maximum or minimum and ignore the local. So if I change the starting point it, you'd think maybe I could get it to find that and I've been playing around with this. I, in this case I can't get it to find uh, the local. I, you know, even if I start right almost on top of it it still goes for the global one, which is probably good. That's that's probably what we want. So it's fairly robust uh, algorithm. And it works well. Well, there it is in one variable. Well, what would this look like in two variables? All right, I I defined earlier. I defined a function of two variables, and it's just one parabola divided by another one. Well, one parabolic surface divided by another one, and uh, that two there is just to make sure that the the uh, denominator can never be zero. Without that, this could be zero. If x equals one and y equals two, the denominator is zero. We don't want that, so I just added two to it. Well, what's that look like? Go to insert graph. Now I need 3D. So let's go to a contour plot and uh, just simply type in f there and hit return. Well, that stinks. Hmm, what's going on? What if I double click there, go over to general, and turn it from a contour plot to a surface plot? Okay, that looks a little better. You can kind of see what's going on here now. There's a peak that's pretty high, and there's a valley, but the valley isn't very low compared to the peak. So let's go back here. So that's why you can see this. That's the peak. There's not enough contour lines to show you the valley. But this looks horrible, so let's fix it. Let's, let's, let's start here. Number one, let's turn a color map on so we can kind of see which is which. These warm colors, the, the yellows and the greens and the reds, those are for a peak. And the dark ones, the, the cool colors, the purples and the blues, those are for a valley. Well, I can't see the valley for two reasons. One is it's kind of not on the plot. And the other one is I don't have enough contour lines. And the contour lines I do have are pretty rough. So let's fix that first. Let's Instead of a 20 by 20 grid, let's go to a 50 by 50 grid. Okay, so that's nice and tidy now. Also, instead of using this default minus 5 to 5 range, let's go minus 3 to 8. It's actually the same span. It's just offset a little bit. Okay, so now I've got things pretty well centered. I still can't see the valley because I don't have enough contour lines. I need more. So if I go over to special and turn off auto contour, I can tell it to make as many contour lines as I want. Now why they buried that under special, I don't know, but that's where it is. So now I've got 15. Okay, now I can at least see it. That's good. Well, I want more than that. Let's maybe give myself 30. Let's double it. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. Maybe let's turn on some grid lines. Um, that green's kind of obnoxious, so let's go to gray. There. Now I can work with that. Let's put this over here. And just by the way, if you want to see what it looks like as a uh, surface plot, there it is. Okay, so it's pretty easy to look at now. So let's go back to the contour plot. That's a little better suited to what we're looking for. And let's give it a starting point. Doesn't have to be a good one, just has to be one. F, X, Y. Now remember there's two points here because there's an X and a Y. Well, let's see, one, one third and two. Let's see, right there, one third and two. Yeah, it looks right. That must be my maximum. For my minimum, Y will be two and X will be something else. And there you have it. Okay, sometimes you want to limit the range of your solutions. You want to limit where you want it to look, where you want the optimizer to look. What if we only wanted it to look uh, below the diagonal, right? The diagonal is y equals x. Well, I can create something called a solve block that will limit my solution. To turn a solve block on, you just say given, and then you define your constraint, the way you want to limit the solution. So I want to say y is less than or equal to x. What that means is if I've got a diagonal line that goes from that corner up to that corner, I only want to look below that line. Let's see, and I want to find the maximum. Whoops, there we go, f, x, y. 
Hmm. Still didn't work. Well, for two reasons. One is one is I typed the wrong command in. Still didn't work. And there we go. Well, it makes sense that those two numbers are the same since they're, they're likely to lie on that diagonal. So I found a minimum right down there somewhere, or a maximum, I should say, right down there somewhere. That looks about right. You can make more of these if you want, but eventually you're going to wall off enough of the, the, the plot that you may not have anything left. That's called an over-constrained problem. But there's how to, how to add a limit to where you look called a constraint. Last thing. What if you have a function that is has three or more variables and you can't plot it? Let's do this. Let's do x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 1 squared. Now you can look at this and you can pretty much tell the, the minimum is going to be at x equals 1, y equal 2, z equal 3, or z equal 1. But I can't draw this. I don't know about you. I live in 3 space. If I wanted to plot this, I would have to have 3 dimensions for my 3 independent variables and one more for my dependent variable. That gives me four dimensions. I only can imagine three. I know there are four dimensions. I know mathematics will let me have any number of dimensions I want, but I only know how to draw three or, less or fewer. I don't know how to draw four dimensions. I know there are four-dimensional hypercubes and stuff, but that doesn't help here. So now I'm going to have to just trust the mathematics Oops, there we go. So there's my there's my guess. And let's see what we get. And there they are. X equals 1, Y equals 2, Z equals 1. That's my minimum. So there you have it. There's maximize and minimize in MathCAD, including constraints and plotting. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.